in this video we are talking about financial management as young adults we talk about the diversified portfolios we talked about keeping a budget creating a budget um some of the things or creative ways to supplement your income the 401k the health savings account so you would want to stay with me throughout this video as i then you to do a financial management class by financial expert here in the united states this channel we talk about career education and lifestyle if these are subjects that are of interest to you please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification for this channel welcome to the channel where education meets adventure and passions are transformed into life Hello guys, so today we are having Vivian, Asamoah and Emmanuel Purple. They are going to introduce themselves briefly and then we can go on with whatever we have planned to do. So Gideon. Hi um, everyone, my name is Gideon. Um, like Emmy said, um, I work for Credit Suisse Investment Bank. Um, I'm within the investment bank as an analyst. Um, I, joined, I joined Credit Suisse last year. Um, and I've been there since. Thank you. Happy to be here. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Brefo. So I am a transfer pricing consultant at Deloitte Tax um, under the International Tax Slash Transfer Pricing Service Line. I'm currently based in Dallas. Good to meet you all again. So today we are going to have a financial talk how to manage your finances as young adults. So I guess. Um, without wasting much time, we would want to start. So, um, Gideon, what is your point of view when we say financial management? Well, when we say financial management, we are essentially talking about all issues that has to do with money. Um, so, as a person, you, of course, have need of money and you need to manage it well. You need to make sure you are putting the money that you have to write to use. And that is essentially um, financial management. And it doesn't only, you know, apply to specific aspect of your life. It's, it's, it's really something that is evasive. It's cut, it cuts across all areas of your life. And that is why I personally think that financial management is an important um, thing that everyone should know how, how to handle it well. Emmanuel, what's your point of view on financial management? Financial management is just trying to understand what uh, value means to you, right? And it doesn't necessarily have to be um, just managing your finances for me, right? You have to actually look at the realm of what actually is the value to you. And then that will actually like translate into managing your finances, right? Because if you just try and look at, okay, this is what money is and this is what um have to do with the money then you would you would you wouldn't actually look at the, the root cause of like mismanagement or like you know stuff that actually actually matters so for me i actually think financial management is just trying to understand what value is for you right? what value is for you so a very big part of financial management is savings how do you prioritize savings as a young adult? I would say that first of all, you have to know that savings um, is supposed to be part of um, what your stream of income goes to. Um, oftentimes, people think that um, savings is, um, you know, the residual of your expenses. I get money every month or every other week. Um, and then they think that, oh, I have these expenses, so I'm gonna use my this money for these expenses and whatever that is left goes to my savings. But I think that savings isn't supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be equally as your expenses, your rent, so to speak, right? So um, if you think of it that way, then it means that every money that you get there should be a component of it that goes to savings. If you think of it that way, then it means that you are prioritizing savings, you know, as part of your um, expenses or as part of um, the money that comes to you. Not seeing savings as a residual of whatever you are making, but a major component, even as like 
just as you reduce your rent or other stuff, your savings should be that part of your income, right? So, Birkin, do you think there is a certain percentage of your income that you should allocate to savings? For me, I don't think so. I, like, there, there are like um, traditional, like people would say that, okay, go with the 20, 40, 40 roll or like go with a 50, 50 roll, right? Like, for me, I think you just have to come back to the basis. What are you saving for? Right. Usually people just save for the future. So if you're saving for the future, then it means that there are other ways to actually augment or like add up to the savings. So you would want to like start with incremental savings, right? Because you don't want to start in a process where you just start like um, take all your money at the end of the month and put it in savings and just struggle at the end of the month, right? It will just make you worse and you wouldn't have the discipline to continue. So for me, I would think that you just have to understand what you're saving for, right? And then you make the plans accordingly to the But I don't think you have to look at it like as Gideon said, as residual. So you have to make it like a planning. You have to start like with what should I save first? Then what should I use for other things, right? That are not my needs. So I think there's no particular like percentage you have to save, but you have to actually understand what you're trying to save. In talking about savings, there there is a perception that if you are paying a rent more than like thirty percent more than your income, then like that is detrimental to your financial health. What is your take on that? So again, back to what Brefo said, it mainly depends on you know how your financial needs look like and what are you saving towards. If let's say that somebody is a single person, right, not married not dating as less dependent on on them in that case if the person let's say uses 30 percent of you know their income to rent and maybe the next 20 percent goes to you know their personal well-being um groceries and stuff like that and at the end of the day they're able to save maybe 40 percent um that is not that bad right but on the other hand, if you take somebody who is married, has maybe four kids, but also has other um, responsibilities, and the person is going to um, rent an apartment that is going to cost them um, 30% of their income, then clearly you will know that if you add all these, what I, what I always call fixed costs to, to this uh, rent, they are not going to save anything at all for the future, which isn't good. So again, understand your financial needs and think about what you want to save towards. That can really help you to strike a good balance as to how much should I save now in order to achieve that goal while I also live a good life currently. So I would say again that the, the, this, this picture is different um, for every, everyone, depending on um, where they come from and, you know, what their financial needs are like. It means that um, the amount you save is very subjective to you as an individual and then the components that count to your spendings and whatever you are getting at the end of the month. So that's fairly established. I, think I, I would want to add to the point, right? Like, for me, I think that, um, like, having that 30% that people are talking about, it makes sense. It just keeps you disciplined. But um, there are like components of your expenses that are fixed and variable, right? Like we do once in a while, like impulse buying, impulse buying. Like you want to buy some good stuff, right? So you just have to determine that, okay, this this is uh, supposed to be the components of my expenses. This is supposed to be like the percentage of my total expenses at the end of the month. Right. So if you think that you're going to live like if you want comfort, many people don't want to like for guys, we, we are okay with living with uh, banking with like a couple of guys, you know, just but girls probably would want their space. So it means that you have to actually look at other ways to actually reduce expenses and put that supplemental amount that you're saving into the rent. Right. You don't have to necessarily like just have like, uh, OK, I have to make a specific 30 percent if if you are just uh, doing that at a, at a like at your expense of your comfort, does that make sense? So yeah. for me, I think that like a thirty percent, it's it's a good thing like to keep you disciplined. But you just have to understand that if you're going to go and live a lavish life, then means that you have to actually sacrifice other things. Let's <laughs> talk about 
unhealthy financial habits that we can adopt to make our finances better? So I would say that first of all, don't put on too much debt. Um, two, don't always overspend beyond um the percentage of your expenditure. Three, buy a house early. I will say this again: buy a house early. Um, four, invest in yourself. If you need to, you know, um, do any certification program, pay for that. Pay for prep providers. Do it. If you need to take on um, credit from colleges, universities, do that. Invest in yourself. It's very important. And the fifth one I would say um, before you know I come to explain any of these is to put decent amount in your retirement account and take advantage of all tax deductible items. Um, we have 529 plan um, for your future kids education. We have H HSA plan for your health um, issues. And there are many more other tax deductible, deductible um, items that you can take advantage of. Well, so coming back to my first question, uh, my first point, which is don't put on too much debt. Um, I would say that, you know, living in America, UK, you know, wherever you find yourself, um, in in these developed countries, it's easier to, you know, buy things on credit than probably, you know, buy things with your debit um, um, card. And there's always that tendency to, you know, spend more um, without even thinking about how am I going to pay this back. So because of that, don't just go around buying things that you have not planned for. If it is not in your plan, don't try to um, think about buying, right? Because you live here and things are really nice. And if you don't take care, you will buy before you even, you know, spend a minute to think about why do you even need this now in your life? So that is one thing. If if you think that um, that is an issue, don't use more of your credit card. Just, you know, when you are going out, probably just put put your credit card home and go with your debit. I'm, I'm saying this card, but now I just realized that we also have Apple, Apple wallets that you probably have your credit card in there. But, you know, just be smart about your expenses and your needs and don't do too much of it. Um, buying a house early is really important to me. I, and I think it's, it's really an important thing that as young folks, we should really think about. Um, it's not, when, when you begin to think up about buying a house, it doesn't mean that you are old. It means that you are smart. And the truth of the matter is that the earlier you start, the easier your future becomes. Usually it takes people about 30 years, on average, let's say 20 years in the US for people to finish paying off their mortgage. You know, that is even when the financial market is good and, you know, they're able to get better um, interest rates. Um, so imagine that you don't think about buying a house until you are maybe 35, 40 years. That is when you are going to buy a house. And it will take you maybe in your 60s, 70s, maybe before you're able to finish paying off your mortgage. And at that time, you are old. You're probably thinking about relocating to Ghana. And now you are stuck. You have mortgage here. And you also need to build a house over there, you know, when you go. So um, people, especially people that are um, not from, you know, the U.S. or Canada or U.K., where, wherever you find yourself, um, think of this early and start investing in it. Again, back to the question, uh, back to what I said earlier, um, that is, where do you want to build your legacy? It's very important that you have good life here while you also build a good life over there. And striking a good balance is good. And that, that is why buying a house is important. If you think about it, well, you pay your rent every month. And to be honest, the mortgage that you pay when you are buying a house is, isn't, you know, very much different from the rent that you pay. You pay maybe like 400, 500 uh, more uh, for the most part. 
when you are paying off your mortgage instead of renting. So why don't you start early, you know, and 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 save yourself the financial trouble when you grow up? Um, and the last one I would like to you know explain more is uh, um, putting decent amount in your retirement when you are young in your career. That is one thing that honestly doesn't strike your interest. I'm so young. I'm in my twenty. I'm in my twenties. Why should I think about retirement? You know, it sounds like it's very far from us, but because it's tax deductible, um, and because you know this money is mainly going into your investment account and not your savings, it really helps you. You're able to um, save much more than waiting. And saving more when you grow up, you don't earn much interest um, when you do that. So the earlier you start, the better you are off um, in the future. Again, this is future stuff. So people don't really take time to think through. But that would be my advice that you start thinking about these things and you start investing in them. Yeah, that, that's very important. Like the, the retirement stuff is really important. As a young adult, you have to actually look at it in the perspective that you are literally like a startup, right? As a startup, they don't have much customers, so they don't have like much revenue, but they have a chunk of expenses. As we as we like as we started saying earlier, your rent would probably take a, a very big part of your um, of your income. So as a young adult, you have to think of ways to increase your above the line, which is the revenue, and also reduce your churn or reduce your expenses. And what Gideon said um, actually qualifies for both, right? Start looking for certifications. Like, how, how can you better yourself? And looking at it from that perspective, you can actually realize that you can add value to your skills in the, in the long run, which can actually increase your and ability, like the amounts you would have to earn in the future. And also looking at it from like burning, like reducing the amount of money that you burn or the amount of money that you spend, which is like the expenses. Like tax, people don't see tax as expenses, but you can actually find ways to reduce your taxes. And people don't know that. You like, like the retirement, it just takes like, it's just like before tax. So you, you would have to put the money in your retirement, then you're going to pay tax after the amount that you contributed. So like that is a very important thing that you have to do. Like if for nothing at all, like in looking at it from the future perspective, trying to save money now in taxes is very, very much great. You can think about it in the future. And in the future, like as Gideon said, you would have like real estate, right? Real estate has so many loopholes or so many favorable laws that can help you also plug your taxes. So if you are thinking about, oh, but I'm still gonna pay the tax later in the future, no you might end up not paying the tax at all because you would have to actually bring in other tax taxable expenses or like deductibility from your real estate or other investment to offset that tax you're gonna pay in the future for the retirement. So why don't you just save the tax money now, right? And the other point is that companies spend uh, like um, what um, matches the amount matches the amount in your retirement like. People don't know that it's, it's literally a compensation, but people don't actually actually think about it that way. If the company is saying that they are matching six percent, if you don't do the six percent, they're not going to match. So you're just leaving money on the table. You are literally saying that um, the amount that they are paying you in base, you are okay with it. Other other compensation, you're not, you you don't care about it. So you have to also look at it that way, right? Like increasing your revenue, as I said earlier. So you don't want to leave money on the table. HSA is also another thing that people also don't know about. It is also a money a money saving machine. Like it, it has several effects. You are saving on taxes. What what's the full name for the HSA? All savings account, right? You are saving money on taxes, right? Because it's tax deductible. Like it's before tax, HSA, and also some companies match that, right? So it's literally like leaving money on the table. And it's just like $3,000 maximum as uh, as an adult, that you have, like 3005 that you have to contribute every year. So instead of paying the money in, a, in a, another insurance, 
paying a high premium because you don't want a higher out of pocket. As an as a, as a young adult, you don't have chronic illness, things that will put you in the hospital that you would have to like pay a huge amount for out of pocket. So why don't you shift that amount you're paying in premium, which will just go worse at the end of the year into an HSA? People don't look at it that way, right? Because you're just leaving money leaving money on the table. The company will match it, and you're also saving on uh, taxes. And in the future. In the future, when you retire, you can literally use that money for almost everything, not not for health, um, not especially for health. But when you retire, it's it's tax free. You don't pay tax on it in the future, even if you retire. So that that amount of money is just there, and you can actually also invest with that money. Good. Is this something that you have to sign up for? Okay. okay. This is this is something that you sign up for when you when you get um employed. And the company sent you a bunch of information, a bunch of things to apply to, um, one of which is your 401 k which you will know. It also comes with um, that HSA plan. Usually, when you are doing your insurance, that, that's where it appears. So you do your insurance, and they will tell you that, oh, do you also need, a, um, do you also need to put something in your health savings account? And if you click on that option, you will be able to go through the process and select how much exactly you want to put towards your HSA account. And during every um, pay period, um, the company that that matches, when you know they send you this email or notification, you will know that, oh, they actually sent in this amount to my HSA account and they sent this to my 401k account and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it appears. And if let's say that you are already um you are already done with the onboarding process, you probably have worked with the company for a while and you want to you know start with this HSA plan, um you can go to um um HR folks, they they I'm sure that they, they will be able to help you out or payroll services, they will be able to help you out and you can always sign up for that. And do it. Some companies that I know do it. Like you, you're able to renew it once a year. Usually, when it's getting to the end of the year, they will send you information for you to review everything. Um, that's when you're able to change it. Others, it doesn't matter when exactly you you opt you opt for it. You can do it. So the HSA, the HSA is for highly deductible uh, insurance premium that you pay. Right? It's not for any insurance. So you have to choose a particular insurance scheme. Then they will tell you that um, they will ask you whether you want to opt in for HSA. It's yeah, not exactly. every insurance. Usually the, the option that comes with HSA, to be honest, it's not that different from the basic one that, you know, you don't get H, H, HSA. And all of these are tax deductible. It's like you still benefit, right? You still benefit them, get, like letting the money go to your... Um, taxable income and being taxed in you know, a huge amount. So what are some practical skills to creating and sticking to a budget? 